We're now going to head back to the Gama Festival in Arnhem Land, where Dan Borsha is reporting for Weekend Breakfast. Dan, always great to have you on the show, of course, and so glad that you're there covering this major event. Now, of course, coming out, the big news coming out of the event so far has been about the constitutional reform mm. and about the possible referendum on a voice to parliament. But what else is going on there? Oh, you're, you're right, Fauzier. It is so good to be here back on uh, the lands of the Yolnu people. And, of course, always good to be back on weekend breakfast with both yourself and Joe. You're right that there is a bit, this big discussion about constitutional reform, and this is one that has been going on for more than a decade now. But this festival coming out of a two-year hiatus from COVID-19, where we simply weren't able to gather in numbers like this, has been an opportunity to reconnect for a lot of Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander leaders, community leaders, business government leaders as well, and have big conversations about the state of Australia. So, of course, constitutional recognition, a big part of that. But so is talking about education, about health outcomes, about some of the other big issues that the nation is grappling with right now. It's also a, t a chance to, to do lots of storytelling. And that's exactly what we saw yesterday when the Prime Minister arrived. He was welcomed in with a very special sacred dance performance performance that has been performed on these lands for tens of thousands of years and sharing that with the Prime Minister was such a, a special moment in time to be able to welcome him and say this is part of your story as well. We are all sharing these big stories about all different types of Australians. Dan, what's really unique about Gama, of course, is that blend of culture, storytelling and intellectual debate as well. It absolutely is. And I was just having a yarn with one of the bosses of the, the Youth Forum where children from right across this region of Arnhem Land and, in fact, right around the nation gather and they have different conversations about a, a youth perspective. And you can imagine that things like climate change, trust, storytelling keep coming up there. And in addition to that, of course, we have lots of discussions on the sidelines of the major key forum. There are cultural discussions. There are dance performances. Performance. There is singing, there is music, and it must be noted that in Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander culture, that storytelling wasn't written down on paper, it wasn't pr written down and left to be on a, in a document. It was through dance, it was through singing, through performance, very much alive. Storytellers, you can see, uh, well, I think you can see behind me, there's a, a fire that's sitting there, and around that are just this array of chairs where people gather and just yarn. So as well as having the very big conversations, it's also really interpersonal. It's about how we connect with each other and, and probably a bit of a roadmap and a reminder for all of us after these last couple of years about how to reconnect. And Dan, it's a real coming together of individuals and communities from right across Australia. Oh, my word it is. You can be waiting in the, in the line to grab a coffee uh, next to a Yolanu elder, a business leader or a community member from Melbourne, Sydney, Perth or Darwin. There is just this incredible energy here. And, and of course, First Nations leaders from right around the nation, from all walks of life. This is one of the things that, that Gama has become synonymous with. It's about bringing people together, about being a place that for tens of thousands of years has been about big conversations conversations and about taking that into the contemporaries. How do we do that in 2022? How do we do that coming out of or navigating the next stages of COVID-19? And what does that mean for our nation? And of course, you've touched on the speech that the Prime Minister is going to give today, where he'll outline the question and the wording that, that uh, the Albanese government wants to put into the constitution. The reaction from that will be driven from right on these lands here by those leaders that have gathered. And it'll be very, give very much of a sense of a pathway forward because, of course, as we know, this is constitutional reform takes all Australians. We're not a country that likes to change our constitution. There have been 44 attempts, just eight successes. Interestingly, mm -hmm. the most successful in history was to count Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as Australian citizens in 1967. So there is this sense that this is the unfinished business, if you will. The pathway, the challenge ahead is how to bring all Australians together and to, to remind everyone that the Uluru Statement from the Heart was a gift from the elders of the nation 
to the rest of the country. The challenge for all of us now is taking that next step. Dan, it's interesting, you know, you talk about there about unfinished business. If we go to past Gama festivals where you know, previous Australian leaders have attended. It's usually at the end of the Gama Festival when the Prime Minister will give a speech to say, yes, there's a need to unite, there's a need to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land of Australia. Is it curious and perhaps a little exciting for those who are attending the festival now that the Prime Minister has actually decided to outline a possible question for a referendum this early in the festival rather than at the end? Well, I think it goes to the very point that we've heard from the Prime Minister from the night he was elected. He, he put Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people at the centre of his policy and social agenda. He also has said throughout the, the weeks um, or two couple of months since that it's about good manners. So the Prime Minister has very much been using putting a voice to Parliament at the centre of his discussions that he's having. So it didn't surprise me, although I'm glad you picked up on it, that mm. the Prime Minister arrived at the beginning of the festival is giving one of the first major speeches this morning. We'll be here throughout the day and is really putting this conversation at the centre of the Gama Festival that, of course, has a theme about looking to the future. So you couldn't think of a better or a more powerful synergy than having the newly elected Prime Minister standing here alongside the new Chief Minister of the Northern Territory talking about a pathway for what they say they want to see as a new Australia. All right, Dan, thank you so much for chatting with us this morning. We're going to come back to you during the course of the show to give us that buzz of what's happening at the Gama Festival in <laughs> Arnhem Land. Dan, thank you.